Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the BuzzWeaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, social media, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If you are new to the channel, I'd like to welcome you guys here. And for the frequent viewers, I would encourage both of you guys to click on that watermark down there in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe along with that notification bell so you guys will know when content is released here on the channel. In gaming news this week, the particular phase of the alpha of New World that we were in has completed and we can't anticipate a newer revamped system at some point. Now, the game is currently under NDA, so I am unable to really kind of give you any type of gameplay or types of feedback about the game other than what the official developers release. But nonetheless, um, I will keep an eye on it and try to give you guys information about New World and I'll provide some links down in the public section there if you guys wanna check out more about the game and of course this week we've been hearing about EA Play which we will of course learn all the different uh, new offerings from EA and of course more specifically out of DICE to see well kind of what they're going to be offering us for Battlefield 5 and of course we had the new Mercury map which has been very exciting and we're kind of looking forward to seeing what we will learn this week with some of the new game modes that they have been describing and perhaps even a map reveal you never know we'll have to take a look but nonetheless guys that's what we can anticipate in game news this week. As fellow creators, it looks like we're going to get much needed attention from the many, many, many months, if not years, that we have been talking about the unfair practices of some of these tech giants. So we have here, Washington, the federal government is stepping up its scrutiny of the world's biggest tech companies, leaving them vulnerable to new rules and federal lawsuits. Yeah, because we, we have been the ones that have been vulnerable and have been vulnerable for quite some time. Regulators are devying up antitrust oversight of the Silicon Valley giants and lawmakers are investigating whether they have stifled competition and hurt consumers. Yes, they have. Think about it. Alex Jones was completely deplatformed. You don't think that's gonna affect his business? And of course, when we get demonetized or deplatformed in general or have our videos suppressed or uh, you know not occur not appearing in recommended or suggested and these types of things that algorithms and AIs use now one could argue well you know that's just kind of the way the system works to help efficiency and things like that and for the most part I would agree that some of these implementations that a lot of these uh, networks and platforms use is to help with all of the nonsense that goes on. But the problem is behind the nonsense, ambiguous language, gray policies, gray terms of service, very soft language that is used uh, to define the activity within these platforms allows the platforms to get around a lot of things like we like Article 230, for example, that protects them from anything that goes on with actual uh, members of their platform. So here, we see just based upon this announcement how it's affected Facebook and how it's affected Google. Here it says here uh, that Facebook, um, the, the amount of money it looks like they lost, uh, they could be fined as much as $5 billion for Facebook because Facebook is going through its own uh, issues right now. See, shares of other tech giants took a hit over similar concern, Amazon stock fell 4.6% on Monday following a Washington Post report. I think his Washington Post is who broke it. Uh, the top US uh, antitrust enforcement agencies. Now what I've been hearing or what's been rumored here for a while is that Facebook has been hiring a lot of antitrust um, attorneys. So that was kind of the future projection. And guys, look, when it comes to government, when it comes to business, these people are days, weeks, months ahead of all of us. So. When this was breaking, like for example, over the weekend, I don't know if this coincides with it, but over the weekend, YouTube went down for almost three and a half hours. Now, I don't know if that correlates with anything that's going on here, but it is, it is interesting because as we looked into it, it would appear that it had something to do with the cloud service with Google, but there's no telling what all it may have, uh, may have been involved there. So, and shares of Google parent company, Alphabet, Alphabet is the, the owner of Google and YouTube, of course, we're down 6.1 after the journal reported Friday that the Justice Department is readying its antitrust investigation of Google. The stock lost about 47 billion from the market cap, bringing it to about 721 billion. So, how will this affect us as creators? We're not entirely sure, but just delivering this message that the government may be stepping in. Now, let me put it, let me frame it this way. The reason the government is stepping in is because 
if it can be demonstrated, and it ha already has been demonstrated, that these uh, businesses are engaged in activity that suppresses individual people, not in the sense that as a private company, of course, they can exercise authority, but still here in the United States, we do have freedom of speech. And so there's going to be interesting lines as it unfolds here and how the language is going to unfold because they are private businesses and they can implement their rules because as members, we agree to their terms of service, right? We agree to the stipulations that they, out that they outline and in their clear language, as we mentioned with Article 230, in their clear written terms terms of service, they can terminate anyone for any particular reason. However, the way they're terminating, if it can be uh, demonstrated uh, that, the, that the forces outside of the company, like special interest groups and outrage mobs, are also affecting how these businesses operate, because we already know that these outrage mobs go after advertising. They go after individual people. We've seen them go after Tucker Carlson on Fox News. So clearly we can see that there is more to it than just a private business trying to implement its terms of service. So I'm gonna keep a very close eye on this and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this unfolds. So this week I have been watching with great interest as President Trump has been visiting the UK on an official visit, this time extended by the UK versus his work business related visit last time. And of course, this comes on the heels of the sweeping victory of the Brexit party led by Nigel Farage and just the overall turnout of the elections in Europe with Marie Le Pen winning in France and Salvini in Italy and Morrison there in Australia, as well as the Nationalist Party in India, which could be sending a clear message to the EU or what I like to call the globalist satellite nations, because to me, in my opinion, as an American uh, freedom lover and a believer in liberty and individual rights, I see the EU as just taking over these sovereign nations and making them vassals. Of course, that's just my interpretation, but nonetheless, it was interesting to see President Trump there in the UK. Of course, it doesn't go without its uh, detractors and protesters, which weren't in nearly the numbers as they were last time. And again, that could be just because the mood of the country has obviously changed with seeing Nigel Farage having such an interesting and incredible victory. No matter how you look at it, no matter how you stack it up, I've seen the way the media has tried to play this out. And there is without a doubt a growing movement of individuals in the UK looking to have this situation resolved because from what we can tell, it just looked like Theresa May was just kicking the can down the road and there was no particular um, line of uh, agreement that she was going to be able to work out. And it looks like it's just going to be end up being just a hard Brexit nonetheless. But I did enjoy watching a lot of the coverage and interesting to see the the, the just the the change in the language and the change in headlines as Trump was there each day. It seemed to improve and improve and improve because of just the way everything was unfolding. So I think this is going to end up being a very good trip for President Trump. It's going to help him in the overall polls, which his poll is rising. And you just don't see that being covered here in the United States. So things are really looking up for President Trump along with that visit. And of course, they were also there to recognize D-Day and uh, the anniversary of D-Day as well, which is what's taking place as of this recording right now. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some of the highlights from that. But nonetheless, guys, I wanted to share that aspect of this week's coverage because I really did enjoy watching a lot of that live streaming there in the UK. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. I want to thank all you guys for the likes, shares, and comments that you provide here on the channel. And guys, if you haven't already, and you should do this, click on that channel icon right there to subscribe to the channel, along with that notification bell so you guys will know when there is additional content here on the channel. And I will see you guys right there behind the camera next Friday.